<laughs> it's easy. Okay, go. <laughs> There's one from the Old West that is just that's sitting. Waiting in the cave. Waiting in the cave. Right. There's that one. So that's there the whole time up until 1985. Okay, then there's right. The, then there's okay. Then no, there's the, the, the wait, wait. Then, what? That's what? Still 1955. Yep. Until 1955, right, right. So, yep. Okay, so in 1955, there's one in the cave. One in the cave. There's the one that Marty originally takes back in one. Right. Then, then there, there's the one from two. The one from two. Well, there's two Martys in 1955. Right. So okay, so that's three. Three. And now the the fourth one is in 1955. Isn't that when old Biff goes back? Oh yeah, to give to give young to Biff give the young almanac. Biff the almanac. So that's that's four. four. You still awake? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. But you guys aren't you guys aren't figuring on the ripple effect here. Oh, the, off the timeline. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, the veered off timeline. Because every time you every time you change it, it makes a different timeline. Absolutely. You know, isn't that? A, do you, do you find that kind of funny that you? Are, are uh, that your story is kind of quoted in science as well? That's the Back to the Future style of time travel. I love it. And I, then there's I, I, yeah, I love it. Yeah, you invented your own physics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> the branching as opposed to on Lost. If you watch that these days, you see there is more of a linear uh, time travel where you can only go backwards and forwards and really not change anything. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, before us, it was it was the Ray Bradbury version because mm -hmm. uh, Bradbury did. You know, he 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 changed stuff in the, in that story uh, called "The Sound of Thunder," where the where the, uh, the the hunting expeditions would go back to prehistoric times to kill dinosaurs. All oh, right, yeah. Remember that one? Yes, and, and then the, stepped on a butterfly. Someone, and, yes, steps on one thing and screws everything up. Yeah, which is why the butterfly effect. Why they call it the butterfly effect in in that uh, Ashton Kutcher movie. And uh, boy, Doc Brown, for somebody that didn't want to interfere with anything in the future, he was one of the oh, biggest the worst uh, offenders. The worst offenders ever. It's like uh, uh, Kirk with the Prime Directive. He'd always quote it, but then he'd just you know have sex with women on other planets. <laughs> but uh, it, it was he was the b biggest offender. Well, yes, but but we established that at the end of at the end of the first Back to the Future where. You know, he pulls out the he pulls out the letter taped up, and he says, ah, "I figured, ah, uh, what, what the hell? hell?" Yeah, but what the figuring what the hell is a little different than building a time machine into a steam uh, a steam engine train <laughs> and then showing up in the middle of the fucking day <laughs> with you know, <laughs> and then the train. Not only is that weird enough that a train just appears out of nowhere and this old man from the eighteen hundreds pops out, but then the thing lifts up off the tracks and flies away flies in the away. middle of the day. I mean, that might raise a few eyebrows, don't you think? Well. That's why we put it at the very end. You don't think about that until you're until you're sitting over your pizza. Afterwards. Yeah. What the? Fuck was and I love the police response time there when a train hits a car, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they could walk all over the docks. They come back. They, he walks home, gets his check, comes back, exchange <laughs> gifts. Yeah, they exchange <laughs> gifts. Talk to Biff. You know, we're not talking the NYPD. This is, this is uh, yeah. Hill Valley. Hill Valley. Crazy. By the way, I also wanted to bring that up. That uh, Mayor Goldie Wilson. Turned out to be an awful mayor, uh, because uh, uh, Hill Valley was a wonderful place, and then Goldie Wilson took over, and there was the theater, a porno theater, there's bums sleeping around, crazy drunk drivers. <laughs> Goldie Wilson stunk as a mayor. Yeah, he sure did. He sure did. <laughs> Just wanted to uh, add that in. Well, you know something, um, I can't say enough about the film. Yes, you Neither, can. Shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> you know, the, everybody here loves it except for two you said, people. You said enough about it about a half hour. Who think we talk about it much too much <laughs> and obsess Bob, on it too much. But Bob, Bob we, you, you could say any time, get a life, because a lot we, of people are thinking it. You did a screening. I would love to hear this guy tell you guys I, to get I, a life. I do have a question, though, that I want to ask you seriously. What is the, uh, the best piece of memorabilia that you own mm. from uh, the movies? Very good. Oh man, that's wow! I've got um, well, the best piece is probably uh, the time displays from the from the DeLorean that got uh, destroyed. Oh, you got that! I've got those in a in a, in a showcase uh, over my fireplace mantle. Um, I've got a hoverboard, but there's a lot of there's there there were a bunch of those. Yeah, I hear that. And then the other thing that uh, our, our special effects supervisor uh, took one of the Mister Fusions. And made it into a lamp. <laughs> you have a Mr. Fusion lamp? Yeah, yeah, that lamp used to sit on my desk. <laughs> and uh, so so that's pretty cool. But the time displays, I think, are, are the number one. Well, Bob, let me tell you something. I just had a 
14 seat theater put in my uh, house and uh, back to the future is is uh, just played constantly and um, I have a case that has gone in and I really could use some uh, back to the future memorabilia what could you send me for free nothing <laughs> all right I'll leave an empty sp I'll leave an empty spot in the case and say it was from you <laughs> buy it on eBay some fake thing <laughs> Yeah, and, and Anthony and Danny really are very, very yes. vocal. They actually did a show, a radio show, yes. where they did nothing but talk about Back to the Future we for three the hours. Yes, and, and I'll, tell you, uh, I'll tell you guys what. How about? Did you hear about it? Autograph a poster to each you guys. An oh, autograph right. poster, dude. If you could do that, I can do that. That would be key. P please, if you don't get, uh, we'll if you don't send hold. him the information and put him on hold, I'll put him someone on. will die. No, 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 no. If no, you no, no, I'm no, gonna no, kick no, your ass. I'll put him on Bob, hold. Bob, please you guys. don't hang up. I'll put him on don't hold. Don't hang up. Don't wait. Oh my God! Don't you do oh, it? Wait a minute. Uh, autograph by no, who? I'll, don't you dare! I don't care who it's autographed. Bob is going to autograph it. I will put it. Bob on hold He's for on you hold. guys. All right. Oh, you son there you of go. a. There's Bob bitch. on hold for you guys. I knew it. <laughs> Back to the Future has been re-released separately for the first time ever. You've never gotten able. You've never been able. To I own knew it. The discs separately. Mars, God damn! Check. I knew the second I said that he was going to hang up on it. Well, you know what? Mars should check the phones because I really was trying to do the right I thing. I knew there. it. That's, that's a little weird that happened uh, right there. Hmm. You suck. <laughs> you know how important. I want a movie theater. I'm going to put posters up. A sign Back to the Future. Uh, he'll call back. I'm sure. Oh yeah, he's not busy. <laughs> he's promoting this uh, new uh, DVD that's out. <laughs> Holy shit. And he said you guys, too, so I'm sure I was Yeah. Thinking, oh, well. Holy shit. All right, I got a little nervous. Big nervous? Star, big star like that on our phone. I didn't know what to do. I got nervous. Hmm. All right. I am livid. <laughs> I am livid. Should we take a break now? Maybe. I think we should. You guys got his number. Just call him back. Yeah, well, well we got his number. You don't? No! <laughs> he called here. That's how it works with guests. They don't hand out our numbers. You know, no one ever thinks it's going to happen to them. No one is uh, prepared when an unexpected computer disaster happens. It's, um... Let me put it in terms you can understand. Let's say uh, somebody is uh, on the phone that wants to send you something really cool. Right? <laughs> and then somebody hangs up on him. That's an ir irreplaceable loss of something. If only uh, the phone had something like carbonite. Get over it, fanboy. <laughs> oh, God. I'm... Carbonite, the number one online backup system in America, it backs your computer up. Oh, so if you have fanboy. pictures, pictures, um, uh, files, maybe a picture of a movie poster. Carbonite will back it up off-site, so it's not even at your house. Speaking of memorabilia, look what I got. Oh, what is that? It's a Wolf Mother uh, concert ticket signed by the boys. Well, zippity fucking doodah! <laughs> Carbonite <laughs> is there to protect your hard drive if it crashes. It happens more times than you think, people. Yeah. 43% of uh, PC users lose irreplaceable files. They did last year. Yeah, they did. And uh, Carbonite, they recovered over 3 million files that otherwise would have been lost forever and ever and ever. And Carbonite only cost 50 bucks a year. Uh, you didn't hear that wrong. It's $50 a year for the uh, safety, the, the peace of mind in knowing that all those photos, your files, everything else is safely backed up with Carbonite. So uh, go to Carbonite.com. You enter the offer code. It's XM. And sign up for your free trial. It'll get you two months free if you decide to buy. That's Carbonite.com. Offer code XM. Protect your priceless files on your computer today with Carbonite.com.